Michael Houlihan and Bonnie Harvey, the founders of Barefoot Sellers. You know the Barefoot Wine brand. These are the two behind the business. They're also writers as well. And you guys have this book called The Barefoot Spirit. But we're talking business for this segment, not exactly bubbling. Look at it now, America's number one wine brand. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think back then that you'd be sitting here <laughs> and discussing your success? Well, we knew it was going to be a success. And uh, we're quite happy that it became such an incredible success. The book is being used in 25 universities teaching entrepreneurship currently. We're giving you 20 years worth of experience. Everything we know, we know because we did it the wrong way first. How do you become a leader in a clubby industry when you've got absolutely no experience? Joining me now with their story and advice for aspiring entrepreneurs are Michael Houlihan and Bonnie Harvey, founders of Barefoot Wine, one of the most successful brands in the U.S. They've just released their book, The Barefoot Spirit. You guys, welcome so much to the show. Right, I mean, it used to be that only the very sophisticated, right, drank wine and then barefoot you know, comes along and you've got six or seven dollar bottles that everybody can drink. If you've been in a liquor store, you've probably seen Barefoot Wine, or you may have seen it at a party or two. Largest wine brand in the country, right? Yes, it is. And these are the people who put it together, Michael Houlihan and Bonnie Harvey, and they join us today. Bonnie Harvey's joining us, Michael Houlihan. <laughs> Barefoot, well, they created the Barefoot Wine, Barefoot Spirit, the uh, two number one books. Numero Uno books, they travel around the planet. Barefoot was shipping 600,000 cases of wine a year. Today, it's topping 13 million. You're speaking around the country to yes. young entrepreneurs today and tackling this in your book, The Barefoot Spirit. So do you think young people are seeing entrepreneurship today as a viable option for them? Absolutely. From the laundry room to the boardroom. And I'm talking about Michael Houlihan and Bonnie Harvey who just didn't even know anything about the wine business and ended up becoming the largest wine brand in America. They're like Levi Strauss across <laughs> of, of wine, you might say, all across the world. We would give them quarterly bonuses based on sales, growth, and profitability. So now you had a very interesting mindset, and this is the backbone of the entrepreneurial culture, the two-division company. And it's the mindset that everybody is working for sales and everybody is working for customer retention. If you pay people for attendance, they will attend work. They will say things like, I was there, pay me. Is that what you want? No, you want production. You want sales. If you think about it, it, it applies to any service as well. And it's certainly not just about the wine industry. It's about any product that you'd be taking to market or any service. What you want to do is talk to all the people that touch your product all along the way and say, what is it that you're looking for? How can I help? And put yourself in the other guy's shoes, particularly when you're talking to your community, when you're talking to your end user, your consumer, your client. What is it you're interested in besides what it is that I'm selling? So uh, you want to start a business, do you? I think it's going to be easy, do you? Uh, I got another idea for you. It takes hardship, hustle, and heart if you want to be successful. This is how I managed to get extended credit terms when I was late on my bill. But when you get up there isolated and insulated in that, that C-suite, you might forget what's going on down at the ground. And so we didn't want that in our company. So we took a look at pyramids and we said, hmm, how could you possibly put the customer on top when you put sales and customer service on the bottom. It worked. It worked so well that as we were growing and expanding throughout the nation, we contributed to community fundraisers and nonprofits in every area around the market where our product was. It worked so well, in fact, that during the 20 years that we were building up the Barefoot brand, we never had paid advertising. So, that was really a good lesson to us. Wow, he says, nobody's ever asked me what I wanted. Everybody comes in here, tells me what they got. You came in here and asked me what I want. Everybody beats me up with features and benefits and programs and pricing. Since you asked me, I'll tell you. Get out a, pa a paper and a pencil, I did. He says, all right, take this down. He says, I'm gonna tell you what I want. He says, I want you to give me a salt and pepper act. I want you to make it better than Bob. I want you to make it cheaper than Bob. I want you to put it in pig. You got that? I said, yeah, I got that. He says, 
and I'm writing this down. Salt, pepper, Bob, pig. <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, what language is this? <laughs> this is a wine industry? I thought this was supposed to be genteel. We took a look at everybody we had to sell, and one of the seven sales we had to make was to the retailer. And we said, okay, what's the retailer's problem? Well, the answer was being fresh and being seasonal. And so we looked at wine as retail entertainment. And so we said, well, how can we make it look like fall? How can we make it look like Super Bowl? How can we make it look like Valentine's Day? And so all these things we did actually drew people to the wine department and helped them make their sales. So they were very happy. Remember, the best sales pitch in the world is, I can help you sell your product. We tell people that are starting businesses, you've got to start in a small territory because you're going to make the most mistakes when you first get started and you want to be able to go around and hat in hand and apologize for these things without having to fly all the way across the country. So that's how you make mistakes right. We have a saying, never waste a perfectly good mistake. The right way to pay people is so that the producers can't afford to quit and the non-producers can't afford to stay. If you set your company up like that, then you're going to get the right people. We had virtually no turnover at Barefoot. The only people that left were the people that we found jobs with our comp competition. Sorry, you know you're not working out here, but there's a great job over here with our competition. What we call a get rich slow scheme, okay? Welcome to ICSB 2014. I'm on behalf of, of ICSB. I know you're going to have a good time. It's your own business, it's your own style, it's your own efforts that make you succeed. In the wine business, the real work is distribution management. Now, I'd go so far as to say, in any consumer product business, it's distribution management, because if it ain't there, they can't buy it. You know, my dad used to say, make up your mind, you want to make a statement, or do you want to make a deposit? <laughs> Store clerks, we asked everyone that could possibly touch a bottle of wine. And we got a lot of good information. And maybe they start off as a mercantile business. Maybe the guy's a plumber. But you check in with him in two years, he's got a plumbing company. You check in with him in four years, he has five plumbing companies. And you know what? He hasn't touched a wrench in five years. But boy, does he need cash flow management, distribution management, personnel management. Those are the three things that keep him up at night. And he wishes he knew what the guiding principles were to make decisions in those three competencies. So, that's our story and we're sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> our wish for you is to be successful. Our wish for you is uh, empowerment. Uh, we hope we've encouraged you and inspired you. You know, if we can do it, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think they have a wonderful story. It's very inspiring to hear their story and how it all happened. They had the, the view, the mission, the hardship, everything what a, a small business startup goes through. I mean, you can feel the raw emotion. They're talking about their journey that they have, and it really sets the stage for the rest of us. To actually meet the founders of the company was, was truly amazing. I enjoyed it uh, because while they were speaking about Barefoot the Wines, they actually were speaking about business practice more than anything else, and I found that very informative. You know, I really like what Michael talked about in terms of the journey of an entrepreneur. I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs think that, you know, I got something that everybody wants, but it's, we think it's gonna be easy because we can always conjure in our mind a perfect world scenario, and what Michael does is says, it's not as easy as you think, but you gotta be flexible. I love the flexibility. It was, was very insightful and something very interesting um, that not only that I learned, but I will pass on to others um, that are within my group that are also interested in the same process. To, to coin a cliche, uh, they do think outside the box a bit more, as in, if you imagine the box as being a sort of pre, uh, perceptions. They're less limited. We're more inclined to say, I can't do that, rather than saying, well, I can. It was very good to hear uh, real life stories of people that uh, set up their business and, and they were successful at it. It's really invaluable information for somebody like me who's starting a business.